Hello everyone, so before we start I want to thank DistroKit for sponsoring this video. So if you don't know what DistroKit is, DistroKit is a distributor, which means that if you want to get your music on like iTunes, Spotify, all the streaming platforms and stores, you will need to go through a distributor. So I've actually been using DistroKit for many years and the reason I think it's the best distributor is that it's just so cheap compared to what you get. So for just a flat fee of $20 a year, you actually get unlimited uploads and they don't take any cut of your royalties and they don't charge per release. Uh, like other distributors. So the upload process is really easy. You just select all the stores you want, you select the title, you have a few options and it's just really easy and they give you advice on how to do everything properly. So it's just a really good service. So if you're interested in that, feel free to check the link in the description below and you can get 7% off your first year. All right, let's get to the video. Hello everyone. So today we will be talking about glue compression and uh, how much glue compression to use, what settings to use, what it's for, etc. So let's talk about the settings. So for glue compression, generally, you would want a low ratio. So a ratio of two is good. Because the thing is, you don't want the compression that's too drastic and really kind of smacking down on the, on the peaks. You want something that's quite transparent. So two is good, or sometimes even 1.5 if you have the option. But two is a good setting, two to one. Uh, for the attack, you don't want something that's too short because you need to let the transient pass through. Like whenever the, the compressor is going to detect a peak, like a drum hit or whatever, it needs to let that attack through because you don't want to just compress all the dynamics of the track. That's not the goal of glue compression. That's more like the final limiter that will do that a bit. But for glue compression, you need to kind of create some kind of breathing effect around the natural dynamics of the track, right? It needs to kind of breathe uh, with the track. And if you just put too short of an attack, it's just going to cut all the attacks, all the punch, all the dynamics, and you don't want that. So anywhere from 10 to 30 is good. For orchestral music, I like 30 because it leaves more of the dynamic through, especially for instruments which are not very punchy, like uh, staccatos or like bass staccatos or big drums, you know, stuff that doesn't have a very defined punch. Uh, it will be more forgiving to put 30. It will just create a better attack. So I like this. Uh, for the release, you don't want something that's too long. Um, like 100 milliseconds is good because what that means is that the compressor will release soon enough after the impact or after whatever triggered it and that it will go back to zero before the next point of triggering. So maybe one hit, it will compress a bit. It will go back to zero and then compress again. If you have too long of a release, it will compress nonstop and the needle will just sit around there and you will just be lowering the volume of the track nonstop and not actually creating that breathing kind of effect, which is the point of glue compression. Well, of course, I don't mean that you want it to be pumping like an EDM track, but the thing is, if the release is too long, then essentially the track is just being pinned down at a certain dB value. It's not actually creating any movement and the glue comes from the movement, right? It comes from... Uh, the compressor interacting with the dynamics, uh, especially for tracks with drums, for tracks with uh, just sustains, so we're going to talk about that later. But yeah, if it's not moving at all, then it's not actually creating any kind of groove. So the compressor is not actually adding anything, just reducing volume, if that makes sense. That's why for most tracks, I would go 0.1. Uh, if it's a very slow track, you can go a bit longer, but not too long, right? 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 is good. Uh, so yeah. So now the harder part is knowing how much to compress and uh, that depends on mostly on the style of track. But let me demonstrate something. First, I'm going to put a ratio of 4 here. Uh, you would actually want to use a ratio of 2 because 4 is a bit much. But I'm just doing this to make the compression more extreme so you can hear it more easily. So let's pay attention to what it does when I start compressing. So I don't know if you could hear, but the compressor mostly reacted around the hits and it created a bit more punch because it heard the hit, it heard the transient, and it let the transient go through with 30 milliseconds of attack and then got back again. So what that did is that it just kind of shaped the track around the hits a bit more and just created a bit more punch and kind of glued everything, kind of glued everything together around the hits. Now, if I was to do it for real, I would probably put a ratio of two and just do a little bit like this. Yeah, that's good. Sitting around 2 dB, a uh, very subtle effect, kind of making the track a bit tighter around the hits. That's exactly what you want. So now let's go to the next track and let's figure out why it might not be a good idea to do that much. So this is, next track is very different. So of course, generally you want to set the glue compression so that it compresses uh, a bit in the loudest part of the track. But uh, since I'm already a bit doing a bit of glue in the mix here, 
I'm going to demonstrate on the previous part here. So as you can see, it's very flat, it's very full of sustains, uh, no real kind of hit point or trail point for the compressor to breathe around. So in that case, the goal of glue compression will just be to slightly maybe even things out, uh, some slight dynamic peaks, uh, but it needs to be very kind of subliminal because if you do too much, it will start kind of trying to detect uh, transients and kind of to breathe around uh, the track in a weird way. It's like, if you do that much compression, is it really adding anything? No, it just makes the thing less, uh, less open sounding and it just kind of creates a sausage. So it's really not helping with anything. So for that case, you would just want to do a tiny bit of glue compression. So the needle barely moving is a good point for these types of tracks, have the needle barely moving or none at all. And lastly, here's a really extreme example. Um, this is of course already mastered, but I think it's still a good track to, to pick as example for this. It's a very punchy track, it's a J-pop track, so of course, uh, J-rock I would say actually mostly. So of course it has some clearer drums and clearer kind of hit points for the glue compression to react around. <laughs> So even though I'm absolutely smashing it, as you can see, it's still reacting well to the drums and you can see it's kind of making the drums punchier and pushing the guitars in the back and just kind of making the track breathe correctly and, and not randomly, unlike this one. Uh, so yeah, because of just the nature of this track, it can breathe nicely around the drums. So for this type of track, you can put a bit more glue compression. So realistically, something like that could work. So maybe 2dB-ish uh, would be good. Uh, but you can be sure that this 2dB are actually going to help the envelope. And unlike this track above, it's not going to flatten the envelope for no reason. So, as you can see, depending on the track, the amount of glue compression you, that you use will vary. Because in some cases, it will sound good and really help the track breathe. In some cases, it will really uh, just kind of wobble around for no reason and not actually help the dynamics at all. So yeah, the softer kind of tracks with less drums, be very gentle. The more dynamic punchy tracks, of course, listen for it, not all punchy tracks um, can have a lot of glue compression. But depending on how clear and defined the punch is, the compressor will just react in different ways and uh, for some tracks it will really add a nice kind of groove and for some tracks it will just kind of flatten things and not add anything. So yeah guys, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments and uh, I will see you later. Cheers!